I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical. I'm here today to talk to you about this new weapon light from Enforce. This is the APLC and is designed specifically for the Glock Auto Pistol. Uh, now we just got this in the other day, haven't even had a chance to get it out of the box. So let's go ahead and pull this guy out of the box and talk about it. Uh, now it does come with a little safety sealing there. Get that done. And let's pull them out. Nice little easy to open packaging. And here we have our light. And it's very compact, very small. That's kind of the whole idea between the APL-C. Now we have used the APL before, the original version, on our SIG 1911. So the APL-C is specifically designed for more compact handguns like the Glock 19. Uh, you get a user's manual, and honestly that is about it. Uh, as far as the stuff in the box. So we'll go ahead and toss that aside. Now, you can see on the Glock 19 that we have here, this is our G19 MOS. It's a fourth gen pistol and it's the one that comes from Glock already set up to equip an optic. And we'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, but what we have on here is the Surefire X300 Ultra. And as you can see, while the Surefire X300 is a great weapon light, uh, it does considerably add to the length of this handgun. Even if this was a Glock 17, uh, the Surefire will extend beyond the front of the handgun. And while that's absolutely fine in a tactical role, if you're wearing a duty belt or an external holster or a drop leg or anything like that, uh, in a concealment role, this is a lot of stuff that's going to be sticking down inside your pants. Uh, if you carry appendix, then it's going to be jabbing you in the leg all the time. So it's nice to kind of get rid of this and go to something considerably more compact. Now, the APLC is designed specifically for the Glock, so you don't have a lot of mounting options here. It's just a standard cross slot screw. You've got a metal boss on one side and a flat blade screwdriver head on the other side. So we're going to take our flat blade screwdriver and pull the screw out real quick. It doesn't take too many turns to get it undone. And then you just slip it on to your handgun. And it's got a really snug fit here. You may have to push it forward just a hair to get things lined up. And then we're going to drop our screw back through. And it didn't get lined up perfectly on the first try, so I kind of had to uh, push the screw just a little bit forward to get things lined up. And by the way, guys, before you uh, go crazy in the comments, uh, before we started rolling, I did make sure that I unloaded this and cleared the handgun. Uh, obviously, you're working towards the muzzle of the gun. You want to make sure that there is no ammunition in it and that the chamber is clear. So we did do that prior to rolling. Now, we went ahead and screwed this guy on here. Let's check the instructions real quick and see what it says as far as how tight we want to do it. And just reading through here real quickly, it doesn't say anything on exactly how tight uh, you want to have that. So again, you know, you, you just want to get it in there. You don't want to go uh, Mongo crazy tight uh, because the body of the Enforce is plastic. Uh, now, I will tell you, comparing it to the previous Enforce APL, uh, the APLC does feel like a higher grade of plastic. Uh, it matches the frame of the Glock a whole lot better. The previous APL seemed to have kind of a, a matte gray uh, finish to it. And while it was perfectly fine looking when you put it on an all black pistol, uh, it definitely looked a little bit odd. So this matches the pistol a little bit better. Now, the APLC, like the APL, uh, runs on one CR123 battery, and it is included, I'm sorry, one CR2 battery, and it is included in the uh, package. So we can go ahead and drop that guy back in there and tighten the head down. And when you screw the flashlight bezel all the way in, then you can hit the button and the light functions. Uh, a quarter turn back on the bezel is a lockout.
So if you're in a situation where it's absolutely critical that you utilize light discipline and you don't have any possibility of bumping the handgun against something or bumping your finger against the pads to turn it on, uh, then you can back it out a quarter turn and lock that out. Uh, in most situations where you're going to be carrying it, you're going to have it screwed all the way in uh, so that the light functions whenever you need it to function. Now, one of the things that initially attracted me to the APL, and it carries over onto the APL-C, is how the pistol light functions. On the APL and APL-C, they have paddles, one on either side of the handgun, that you push in to activate the light. To activate constant on, uh, you just simply tap the paddle and release it, and now the light will stay on uh, without any input whatsoever. Uh, to turn it off again, you just tap the paddle again. Now, if you want a momentary, then you simply hold the paddle, and then the light is on, and as soon as you want the light off, you just release the paddle. Uh, so if it's more than just, I mean, it's fairly quick, um, the instructions actually tell you exactly what the time difference is to go from uh, momentary to constant on, but in actual use I found if it's something where you're going to bring the handgun up and search and identify, uh, by the time you decide, okay, that's not it, we need to move, um, then the light goes off. The only time you run into issues is if you're trying to strobe it manually, uh, like some of the old uh, low light classes used to teach, uh, that can cause some problems. So with the APL and APLC, it's better just to come up, hold it on, and then drop it to go off. Uh, there is no strobe on the APLC. It is just simply on and off, uh, constant or momentary, which is fine. Uh, I'll argue the utility of strobe. Most people don't have the situational awareness to be able to engage it or disengage it on command in a high stress situation. So it's really better just to have your light operate in one mode and that's it. Um, the one exception to that I'll say is you really do in a handgun like this, uh, you want to be able to run a constant, a constant on and a momentary on. And the reason why is really simple. Um, if I'm in a situation where I have both hands on the handgun, uh, then it's very easy for me to use my support side thumb uh, to search and utilize that momentary function. Now, if something happens and this hand is disabled, well, I need this finger to operate the trigger. So this finger can't sit up here and hold this paddle on. Now, you could conceivably uh, bring your lower finger up and utilize the paddle and then try to get your trigger finger in or vice versa. It's just, but it's not worth it. Uh, so if you're in a situation where you're doing single hand drills, it's very simple with the APL and APLC to come up, tap the paddle to bring the light on, then do what you need to do when you come down, tap the paddle to turn it back off. So it's very easy to run one-handed and do what you need to do. Uh, so that's something I really, really like about this. Now, the APLs uh, initially, when they had their quick release uh, mount on here, had some issues with the lights coming off under recoil. Uh, with this design, it's just simply a slot to fit over the Glock rail, and then that cross bolt, I think there's pretty much no chance of that coming off unless you impact something very, very hard. So overall, I really like the design. I like the look. I like how compact it is, and it doesn't uh, extend any further than the muzzle of the Glock. And if we look across the top, uh, it also is no wider than the Glock slide. So putting this on your handgun, it adds a little bit of weight to it, but it adds no bulk whatsoever. That's kind of dead space in most holsters. Uh, most holsters have a little bit of extra material that comes out here. So as far as the profile of the weapon when you carry it, it's really, for practical purposes, not any larger feeling than it would be without the light. And now, uh, with a handgun like this, you have all the benefits that you have, or all the benefits that you could possibly need uh, if you're going into a situation where you have to fight for your life. We've got an optic, we've got a light, we've got 15 or 17 round capacity, should you decide to run full-size magazines in this thing, uh, in a nice compact package. So it's something I've really, really begun to like. Uh, now the only thing left is to get this guy out, take it out to the range, uh, let's shoot it and see how well the APLC works. So stay tuned.
Okay, now we're back from the range. Uh, we did a little bit of shooting, put about 100 rounds through the handgun. The APL seemed to have worked just fine, uh, no problems at all. Now it is 200 lumens, and there were people that will argue uh, 200 lumens versus the uh, eye-blinding sun that you get uh, with an X300 Ultra or a TLR1 HL. Uh, but here's the reality of the situation. With a concealable package like this, you need enough light to be able to identify a target. Uh, most of the time you're going to be inside structures. Uh, you are going to be within a intermediate to short range. Uh, so 200 lumens is more than enough to illuminate the target. That is way more than my first tactical pistol mounted light actually had. Uh, so I had no problems with uh, 200 lumens. My daily carry uh, G26 has a weapon light on it that has less than that. Uh, but it's the thing that we sacrifice for the concealability. Uh, the benefit that you get with uh, 200 lumens is you get a longer run time on the battery uh, than you do if you're trying to pull maximum output from a little CR2. Um, and that's a big deal is you want to be able to draw this out of your pants, kick that thing on and have the light function uh, versus pull it out, have two seconds of, you know, blinded like the sun run time and then your light's done. Uh, so really, really nice thing there. Uh, overall, I really don't have any complaints about the APLC. Obviously, 100 rounds is not a uh, guarantee on function or durability, so we will continue to shoot the handgun uh, with this light on here. Uh, one of the biggest concerns right now, since this light is so new, is where can you get a holster for it? Well, there are a couple of companies that are currently uh, making holsters for this. And as more come online, uh, you'll see more options out there. But uh, for the two current companies, check the links in the comments section below. Uh, and we'll put it down in the description of the video on where you can get a holster for it. Uh, the current price on the Enforce APLC is about $115, which I think is a great deal for what you're getting. Uh, you're getting a very attractive light, uh, really overall a great improvement, a great evolution of the APL design, and I'm looking forward to working with this a little bit more. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it really helps us out when you stick these videos up on Facebook or you share them out or you send them out through social media and it allows us to keep doing what we're doing. I want to thank Enforce for sending the APLC out to us before they were actually available so we can get this produced and get it out to you. And uh, until next time. Get out and shoot.